so I'm here to introduce Reverend Dr. Charles. Um, she is currently in the Chief Executive Officer of the Edgar Casey's Association Re Research and Enlightenment, which is the ARE. And I, she has done many, many, many things in her in her life and traveled and went to colleges and got degrees and she's just a lovely soul and I'm not going to, she wants to use that time to talk and, and want, and one of the things she wanted me to share with you is her purpose that she seeks is to be a channel of blessings to, so, to everyone, to, but someone today. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Reverend Dr. Nicole, Nicole Charles. So <laughs> Greetings. Good Happy Sunday, people. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Sunday. So I'm going to share something first that I shared with the board. We just had a board meeting not too long ago. And then I shared it with the staff at staff meeting. So it's a little nonsensical chuckle. Hopefully you'll chuckle with it. Do a little experiential experiment. What time was Adam of the Bible born? A little before Eve. <laughs> <laughs> so at the board meeting we try to do, um, some of the board members will do little chuckles for to get it kind of like moving some of that energy just to begin to laugh at life before we get to the serious business of life. So I am starting this lecture today with really looking at some stories. I'm gonna use the Bible, some other writers, Casey, of course, the Tao Te Ching. We're gonna, we're gonna explore our world today. So what's been fascinating to me lately has been the story of David and Goliath. Goliath was the superstar of the Philistine army. It's kind of like the US Marines. Simplify, just hardcore, you know, just take him down. And people were scared of Goliath. He was a brute, not just, he wasn't just a warrior, he was a brute and he knew it. He was the fiercest fighter of his time. This man stood six cubits in a span. Does anyone know what that is? Exactly. Well, that is nine foot nine inches. Yep. And even his clothes held strength. The Bible speaks of Goli Goliath's coat as male, Goliath's coat of mail. And that, that literally weighed 5,000 shekels. Now, what is a shekel? Well, a shekel is between 125 to 200 pounds. That is based upon the material that was used, what type of iron or material of copper or bronze was used to make the coat. His spear, known as the weaver's beam, was 600 shekels of iron. That's 25 pounds. The tallest man today is Sultan Kozin, and he stands at eight feet, 2.8 inches. He weighs 322 pounds. So therefore we know that Goliath then had to be closer to 400 to 450 pounds, to say the least. So he was not only huge in size, even what he brought forth and what he wore, the weight, that force was beyond comprehension. So what does this guy to deal with metaphysics? What does this have to deal with us? Goliath, is very much like our problems. It's very much our shame, our fears, our procrastinations, our promises that are broken, our half-truths. It's, it's so big as it is, but then it's the other stuff we add to it. As a matter of fact, we are rocking the coat of mail. We are carrying around 125 to 200 pounds of unforgivable, unforgivable treatment to ourselves and to others. Yeah. 
We are the shame of what we didn't do, should have done, and still not doing. We can't defeat it because the spirit, we just keep hitting ourselves. Meaning we can't defeat what we choose not to fight. And when we really choose not to win in our lives. There were many who could not fight Goliath, many. But there was one, one, a little small, little puny thing who was very young, 16. And 16 is a age of innocence, thinking they know everything, but really don't. And it's that innocence that gave David the most amount of bravery. It is in that innocence that he didn't say, like many, I can't. He said, why not can't I? That innocence, that fearlessness, that what else do I got to lose? Yeah. David, I'm gonna kind of, before I get to that, we sometimes forget our innocence because the adult is standing looming with its own biases, its own fears, its own, well, I remember that experience, so I can't move out of that experience because I have to defend myself to not go back to the experience known as trauma today. It's the experience that keeps us frozen. It's the experience that makes us forget how powerful we really are because we always forget whose we are because we step in front forgetting that the divine, the creator, the creative forces, the divine forces stands for us, for it is within us and we forget. David put five smooth stones, stones or little pebbles in his satchel. Plus he was carrying his little slingshot, you know, always hitting little things and it's a good shot. So David put five smooth stones in his little waist satchel. Now, it's very fascinating that the Bible calls for five. Now we're going into the metaphysics again. Five is mentioned in the Bible 245 times. Quite fascinating. <laughs> in the first five commandments of the Bible, it's about our treatment and our relationship to the divine. The next five are about our treatment and relationship to others. So I think that David's five was about the non-fear of the divine, the bravery. And he couldn't be brave unless it was already within him. We are not what we are not. Read what is the divine, what is this thing, this creator, isn't it full of power? And do you not create every day in your world? Do you not bring forth what you want? Think about it, we're creators. We are, we cannot say we are children of the divine, and not have the essence of our parents. Don't you carry your parents' DNA? So how could you not be that? How dare you think otherwise? Amazing you, blessings of you. But we forget that. So we have to remember like David, not why is this giant coming? It is accepting there's a giant on the earth. We usually want to fight or run away from the thing that comes at us. We want to run away from the thing that seems to just be there. And what happens to it, it begins to get heavier and heavier. It begins to wear the coat because we're not dealing with it. We're running away from it. So while everyone else was running in the city of Gath, which is where Goliath was from, David knew that he was not going to let his life be led by this giant who was creating death disrupt. A lot of people saw all of them kind of didn't pay attention to David. He was like this little, the little kid, right? We think that sometimes the smallest thing can't help us when it's the smallest thing of a prayer, of a supplication to say, help me. We'll get you out of that. So, the people 
So when he was, he was, he wasn't trying to run away from it. He was not going to let his life be ruled by it, nor his people. That's your family and friends. Are those challenges affecting other people? Are they getting in the way? Are they stepping in front of? No. You have five smooth stones in your pocket. Five. So one day, you know, the Philistine army is coming in to tear it down again to plumber your city. And David, in David's innocence, in his freedom of thought, of his lack of biases, lack of experiences, lack of fear, lack of shame, because he's still innocent. And even, and don't think he didn't do anything wrong. He was a kid. He did probably a whole lot of things. Took little cookies and little pieces of bread and fishes when no one was looking. So it wasn't like he was exempt from wrong. But he didn't hold on to it. So in that innocence, he took himself and he went and he seen Goliath and Goliath and the Philistines were trying to burn stuff down and just create muck. And that little David took his little slingshot and took a smooth stone out and pulled back and hit Goliath square in the center of the head, which is what? The what? Third eye. The third eye, the pineal gland, mm -hmm. right? Huh. Mm -hmm. What that shot was removing what was holding him back in the physical realm in order to move deeper into the spiritual one of peace, forgiveness, patience, kindness, love, joy, and the most important was the love. Love that I'm not going to let this giant run amok in this world is for me. We hold on to the giants. And I'm saying, why? They're running amok. And you don't have to play small to it. You must be the giant and meet the giant. Because we will always have this back and forth. Now, if you think about the, st the stone, the little pebble, and you're like, how could that take it down? We're going to get to that, too. But doesn't, in the Bible, in Matthew 17, 20, it says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, so that little stone, that little pebble, compared to Goliath, was a mustard seed, wasn't it? That little stone was the faith needed to take it down. And this giant felt that it stated that it shook. Now, at that time, people were much more smaller statured. I bet you someone did fall, you would kind of feel the earth shake. That's how powerful it was. So if you have this faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, move from here to there. It says, please try to move from there to there. It didn't say, can you just move to the left a little bit? It says, if you say move from here to there, it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. Where are the mountains you have climbed? Do you keep hitting the ditches? Do you keep falling back, not thinking that you can climb the mountain? You created the mountain. It's a part of us. A lot of people like to run around wearing crystals and holding crystals. Where are the crystals coming from? <laughs> so what you mean you can't move the mountain? You're, you're holding on to them. So, that mineral that you are being attracted to in a crystal is what is within you that needs to move, that needs to unleash, that needs to be let go on of, that needs to kind of balance you out. We are nature and flesh and matter. Hmm. The Tao Te Ching speaks about having faith in the way things are, for there is no good, no bad. It is all the Tao. Our issues, our challenges we find is, is that we want to seek constant peace, constant fun, constant happy, constant, I don't want any strife. We are constantly trying to seek that, con that consistency, that constant thing. It is impossible. It's not going to happen. Sorry, let's let it go. We got to get excited that, you know what, this is part of life. This is the five sufferings that Buddha spoke about. In the middle, there's this thing right here. 
challenges, the sufferings, the five sufferings. But if it's really suffering, I'm going to kind of go up against Buddha. Is it suffering if it has to be? Or is it how we go up against it? Am I choosing to move my mountain or am I choosing to stand and run around and scream, the, the giant is coming? Because have you not had many challenges and are you still standing in the power and the presence of today? Have you crumpled? <laughs> Y'all looking all gorgeous up in here. I don't see no crumpling. Not one. You're still here. The, ma the majestic magnificence of you. Mr. Casey puts it this way in reading 3440-2. See the joy, even in sorrow. See the pleasure that may even come with pain. So let's get into how we're going to take down some of these giants and move these mountains. And I have five stones for you to take today. We're going to kind of move a little slow in them. Well, not really. I got five minutes left. The first is focus. Stop focusing on wish I coulda, shoulda, lose. Stop focusing on that. How it shoulda been if I woulda known how it coulda gone, dot, dot, dot. Stop that. God is good all the time. So focus on the good of you. Focus on the hope that you will do it this time. Not I failed yesterday. This time, focus. Focus on the race you need to run. And even if you choose not, you know, when people, we're not talking about the master marathoners, we're talking about the everyday marathoners. When I used to do marathons and I thought, oh my gosh, I'll never be able to run all of that. You know, we walk at half of it, right? You ain't got to run, what you running for? Conserve your energy. You're not a master runner. You're not trying to do a marathon in two hours. You ain't getting paid, right? Take Take the steps, be okay about it, enjoy it. Look around and be like, oh, I didn't see that here. You can't enjoy life if you're not focused. You're so busy thinking about the outcome, you can't enjoy the journey of look at me. I'm bad shit. I know that's right. I'm bad, you know? I shake, I shake. Mm, power. <laughs> I mean, we forget. My favorite poet, Nikki Giovanni, states in Ego Trippin', even my errors are correct. Are you really ever wrong? Sometimes we do things that violate people, but I'm saying self-preservation always comes first. No one's up here, and when people don't self-preserve themselves, then there is mental health challenges going on. So we gotta remember, Self-preservation, let me focus. Focus on the memories that bring you joy. Go outside in nature and repeat what God said, and yes, it is good. Focus on the expectation, not on the failure. Focus on what it will, not what it can, not what it has looked like. You have to see it to believe it, but you must know it. Affirm. Affirm that you can handle anything and everything. Affirm that you will get the support you need. Affirm that you are not here by mistake. Affirm that problem, that mountain is not a mountain, it's just a little hill. Affirm your life is still waiting for you to say, here I am. And know it will be okay. As Nietzsche and Daishonin stated, winter will always turn to spring, always. Imagine. That's the third stone. Imagine joy, peace, harmony. Imagine freedom as your birthright. Imagine favor. And when I say freedom is your birthright, imagine that you don't have to be imprisoned to yesterday's stories, the stuff, the things we hold on to. Imagine the grace. Imagine the calm. Imagine it tied in beautiful wrapping paper. Imagine it's yours to try on a lighter coat. Imagine. Imagine the weight off, imagine the burdens going, imagine the freedom of yesterday. Imagine that, ain't it sexy? Trust, Joshua 1.9 says, be strong and courageous. 
Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for I am with you wherever you go. We are not alone on this journey. We are never alone. There are times we may get lonely, but because we're leaning onto our own self too much, which sometimes just wants to trust that someone got their back and no trust spirit, trust the creator, trust the divine forces, trust the creative forces, Jesus, Yahweh, Nateh, Allah, Subhmad, whatever you wanna call it, trust it. And pour your heart out to God for it is your refuge. It is. And last stone is hope. Hope for the best, hope for the things not seen, hope for the new opportunities, hope for the new experiences, new friendships. Like a child, hope to get that toy, which is the vacation, the invitation, the meal, just good conversation, a phone call. How you doing? That's all. Hebrews 11 one says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. I don't know I'm going to get it, but I'm hoping for it. And you got to keep that alive. Faith makes sure of what we hope for and gives us proof of what we cannot see. So I did not tell you what today's topic was, but I want to say the word. You give me the first letter of that word. Focus. Yeah. Affirm. Yeah. Imagine. Imagine. I. Trust. I. Hope. I. What does that spell? Okay. Keep it going. Bye-bye. Thank you. I'm I'm